Power and Tales Spring Season. My name is Nimsh, and I'm here on the couch with Lothar, as always, and uh, Crane. Welcome to Couch Crane. How are you doing, man? Thanks. Uh, doing okay. I mean, I just lost, so... Yeah, you shouldn't ask that, that happy, question. I'm okay. <laughs> I think I played uh, reasonably well, had a good strategy, so you should try not to be too salty when, like, you, you should only look at your own performance. Made some misplays, but... You did your best. Overall, really good. I'm Absolutely. not that experienced with the Murloc Paladin, so that was where I misplayed a little. I think I played actually perfectly with the other two decks. But now we can cast. So now bygones cast, be bygones yeah. and quigons be quigons. That's fine. Now I'll just enjoy Hearthstone. Now I have nothing invested anymore. All right, perfect. So uh, the next match, Lothar, is... Um, Between Vince and Tracket Style. Okay. And Vince, who was talking to us about Vince? You need... You, uh, Vince is a, f is a French player, and mm -hmm. everybody is hyping him up. He is a new French player, new addition. I don't know which games he was playing before, uh, but uh, everybody is super excited um, to see him play. And the tracky style, we've seen him before uh, playing the aggro decks. Yeah, and as the second Romanian representative yeah. still in the tournament, right? All right. Um, do you know anything about those players, Crane? I played against Vince yesterday mm -hmm. um, when we were like 3-1, I think, so... It wasn't a, an important match, but he seemed to play pretty well. Uh, Do you remember I his I deck choices for, yeah. for that match? The thing is, I got 3 0 so I only saw the Reno Luck. Wow. And it was with the uh, Leroy and yeah, Leroy combo. All um, right. So he won 3 0 versus you with the Reno Lock at the time? Yes. That's pretty impressive, especially because yeah. people put you as one of the best players in the tournament y yourself. So, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, we actually talked to those players, so let's see what they have to say uh, in a short video. Hi, I'm Gabriel Aka Ithaki Style. I'm from Romania. I play Hearthstone for one year. My name is Vincent. I play Hearthstone since one year and I play for Melty Esport. Um, I came to Romania because I never traveled to this city and also the cash prize was, was really cool for this event, so it makes a good occasion to, to play and travel. Crane is a good one. I don't have de asemenea Thais, dar dacă aș putea cu ei, n-aș fi o problemă. Aș fi o experiență nouă pentru mine să joc împotriva unor jucători care sunt în fiecare zi pe stream. So, my goal was to have three decks with not the same goal. Like, Druid was for control decks, Paladin was because it's Paladin, it's the best deck, and the last deck I played was Reno Warlock because it's the deck I played the most and I like it. The two favorite are, of course, Thais and Crane, because Crane is really good online and Thais made it to BlizzCon and he was really well in tournament. So I think I saw the bracket and I can play Thais in final. Yeah, I'm going to play in the final, but the top 16 is something important for me. It was my first time to play in the final, and it was a good result. I think open tournaments are really good because always when you watch the streams, the tournaments, it's always the same names. Now that the tournaments are open, some names just disappear and a lot of new players can have their chance, their chance so it's fine. Tracky style versus Vincent. I, I like those guys, and they they di he did mention. I like them a lot as well. Oh man, <laughs> he got a lot of praise. A lot of a lot of praise. Um, tracky style playing his first tournament, uh, a local guy, but he did qualify for his the his first big tournament. His first big tournament, yeah. But he did uh, go for the qualifier. How hard was the qualifier, by the way? It was only four wins that you needed, but I guess it really depends which four players that you that you run into. It was one of the easier qualifiers for like. A Compared to how big of a tournament it is, so yeah, not not the hardest turn, uh, qualifier, but still four games against four guys al who also wants to qualify a lot. Uh, it's always hard. Definitely, but definitely one of the easier. Okay, overall, because you didn't have to go for like eight rounds of uh, yeah, exactly. of single elimination. I and one dude out of two thousand will advance, ex right? Yeah, exactly. That's like at the via game qualifiers last year. It was like I don't know how many people with Swiss you needed, like. 8-1 or 7-2 just to advance to the top 16. Yeah. And only two players qualify, yeah, from each of them. Yeah, but as usual, ev gruesome. As usual, every uh, every game matters. Uh, we have yeah. some predictions here. 33% uh, thir 
for Vince, 67 for Tracky Style from Twitch chat, and 50-50 on Twitter. We've seen Tracky Style, but Vincent is uh, a mystery. Um, well, we know now that he re is really good with Rena Lock, and this is his favorite deck that he played the most. He plays Paladin because it's the best. Lothar, do you agree it's the best deck? I would say Droid is uh, the best. I mean, maybe it's not the... Uh, like, on s po uh, skill ceiling? I mean, sorry... Um Paul scaling is like not the best, but it can win against every single deck, which you can't say really against Paladin. Like it, some some matchups are so skewed against the Paladin that it can just it's not possible to win. But with Druid, the inner vet just broke the game and can win on turn one basically. I think I've heard that from you for a fourteenth time. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm just asking me the same question over and over. I didn't again. ask you about <laughs> Druid and inner vets. I asked you if Paladin is the best. Yeah, because <laughs> I agree and I. Give you my reasoning. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Crane, do you agree? Uh, no, I actually don't. Th I think people overrate Paladin a little bit. I mean, it offers a lot for how much you have, like how well you have to play it. But yeah. I think Druid is better. Okay. So ah, see? <laughs> <laughs> I do agree with you guys as well, actually. Just wanted to know your opinion. I also think Druid is the best deck at the moment. Uh, Paladin is certainly the most popular, or is it? Like, in this tournament, Druid was the most popular. Yeah. 24 Druids in the first phase and 18 Paladins. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, says some people play Murloc Paladin for no apparent reason. Well, for a reason. But yeah. I didn't play it before this match, but I knew he would probably take control. Yeah, so, yeah. There is a Murloc. Oh! See, he's Stay playing shot. Murloc Shaman. Come on. Oh, yeah. You're right. Wait, wait. Uh, there is a monkey. Yeah. So this is a... a oh, elemental destruction. It's a patron warrior. Yeah, patron with most the monkey. Most likely, most likely. So let's uh, let's talk about the monkey overall, uh, because some people actually like it in patron. How good is it? It's um, decent. I mean, it's a spider tank, and sometimes they have to kill it when they don't want to. I don't think it's that good, but I've seen other decent players playing it, so I guess it's not completely rubbish. But I personally don't favor it. What are the al alternatives? You're not playing Corsairs because you play the monkey, or Wh what are you cutting? I think it would make a lot of sense to cut the Corsairs if you're running this card. Um, mm -hmm. I've also seen people playing around with cutting uh, Frothing Berserker, which I definitely think is not good. Because um, I, I don't know, I feel like I win so many games with the Frothing actually, either by them killing the other guy or them having to remove it. Um, All right. So I, I guess it's also about playstyle. Oh, this looks like a decent turn. Yeah, the draw was kind of important. Yeah. Now it clean ups, it cleans cleans up the whole Ooh, board. That's a super good draw. And next it can set up a death spider, kill whatever minion will be played unless it has a divine shield, and set up a good turn with armor smith. So. Yeah, and on the other hand, from Shaman, it's not much you can do here because Shaman wants to do damage with minions. So that one, that's two damage from the one minion is okay. But then where is the twin? And you only have some burst cards, like one burst card actually. Yeah, but the horse rider is pretty disgusting for the death bite. So I'm not sure. He's, I'm not sure he's still gonna go for it. He could just drop a shredder to be yeah. honest, because having the armor smith in hand represents so much life gain. If he, he can afford to wait a little bit and then do the whirlwind effect when he plays the armor smith plus an additional minion. I uh, completely agree here. Like the 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 only thing that changes here the decision to play the death side was the divine shield. Yeah. And I like how but but on the other hand you have five mana next turn so you can play both Ar armor smith and acolyte of pain so gain life and gain cards. Yeah. So it's not that bad. It depends if you have Harrison Jones in your deck. Because if you have it, then you might look for it, right? Yeah, I guess so. Interesting uh, Shaman build overall. Not only Elemental Destruction, but uh, Stormforged Axe as well. To yeah. be honest, I, I kind of disagree with how Tracky Style was just throwing minions on the board when he could have just gone for the hero power instead. It's a tactic that any hunters did use to just utilize the damage as much as possible, just squeeze those hero powers as fast as possible, because you still present some threats on the board with a single minion or even two, Yeah. and you don't overextend into a whirlwind which just happened this game, right? How early did he know that this was a patron warrior? Does he even know it? I don't think he actually knows. Yeah, there's no reason he knows that it's, yeah. it's a patron warrior. So maybe that influence, like, if he knew it was a patron warrior, I'm sure he would try to draw out the game because you can actually win the sort of, like, semi-longer game. Uh, but I still think Chucky Star is in a great position here overall because yep. he has uh, at least 10 damage from 
um, the combo of Doomhammer and Rockbiter plus five on top of that. He has the hero power. He's still one more weapon attack. It, he has actually elemental destruction for a possible patron outburst. Not bad. Yeah. It's actually doing quite okay, but... An armor smith is gone. Uh, it actually looks kind of rough for the patron. Now I guess he'll just doomsayer. Uh, Double I mean, lava I mean burst. Doomhammer. Uh, you can after attacking, yeah, yeah, because you get the wind fury. It's quite nice. He has so ma much mana in hand. Like, squeezing in the hero power is the same amount of damage, but it's gonna take so many turns for the weapon, and he has so much mana in hand that it's it's better to just play the weapon here. I think. Absolutely. So I agree with what he did. You can can you patron? Not. Nah, not it's necessary. Not, yeah. It doesn't feel good to play Patron and just uh, Taskmaster. What about just Taskmaster on Lothab and try going ham? Because you're racing at this point, like you see a Doom Hammer, so you have to kill in two turns. If you go for Rock, you only have twenty Death Spites. Shredder is probably fine as well. He would be one off even if he played Death Spite and Taskmaster's his guy and just win face with it all. He'd be one off next turn. So if it would have been lethal next turn, yeah. Represented, then he should have gone for it, just to force his opponent to trade, in, in my opinion. So how much damage is this? this is 17, so two bits of damage off. But to go for it anyway, right? Yeah. Hero power, I mean, lava burst. Don't see how you lose from this, but. Well, you can also just use Arjun Horse Rider and do damage from the hero yeah, power, right? But, but mm. you've just seen Lotho. It kind of generates. Uh, oh my God! Why? That's oh, that's like kind of stopping. Uh, Grommash win? Wait, well, Grommash how do you activate Grommash with just Inner Rage? Yeah, yeah that would be enough. Was one off, right? that would be tw yeah, no, that that's was 19, right? Uh, 9 no, plus that was 12. Uh, ah, it's actually yeah, 20 21. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that made a little sense. You know but my math is off today, right? You saw that <laughs> in the math. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's still good, though. <laughs> and now he has uh, a kill anyway. Unless there will be a Sludge Boucher, I guess. No, he's still... Sludge Boucher and Hero Power could stop lethal. But... Belcher hero power was nine HP and he has in hand seven. five seven. How much is he overloaded? Just for two? He's on Still overloaded by seven. three. If three. I'm not mistaken. Well he's oh, winning five, yeah. he's obviously winning now, right? But like Belcher hero power would stop lethal from a hand and hero power. Yeah. Not that it matters though. Uh this game is over at the moment. Or is it? With monkey? Um I don't think he has the mana. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have the mana to kill it if the monkey Oh, drops. but he can just elemental and lava burst, right? Why did he use the Taskmaster instead for... Oh, he went for the battle rage. Yeah. yeah. Elemental is what was... Uh, a ton spread? has to come out. Anoyatron is... Uh... Ah, okay, that's just lethal, obviously. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, without hero the power. The hero power, right? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Well, that ended fast. <laughs> well, welcome to Shaman Land, and we might actually uh, <laughs> see a free zero Shaman. Can we see the free zero? So he's still like Vincent ha still has a Paladin and a Warlock. The Warlock is a Reno Lock. How's Reno Lock versus Shaman? Uh, I would say it's a risky situation, right? Yes. Because you don't have like you have board clears, but one of the board clears is a Hellfire. Yeah. That's not exactly a good card to play against a face Shaman. If you get your Reno Jackson in the perfect situation, most likely turn six, so then you can kind of slowly dig yourself out of the grave. But the Doom Hammer is the MVP of the match. Yeah. yeah there is there is a sh um, is there an ooze? Possibly some people play still one one ooze in the deck. Yeah, there might be. I didn't. I think I saw the ooze yesterday. Um, but as to the question, like um, it's so 50-50. You need the Reno. Kay. If you have the Reno. It can be tough for the shaman. If you don't have the Reno, the shaman almost always wins. Yeah, it will so just burst you down. That's why it's so scary. And the paladin is actually very good. If it's a, if it's a secret paladin, it's actually very good against the shaman, in my opinion. Oh, so oh really? Like a lot of people uh, were bringing shaman to counter the paladin specifically. That's definitely wrong. <laughs> so e opinion, explain yourself then. Why? W why do you think it's good? If the thing is, the paladin actually raises the shaman. Yeah. They actually kill them. They just play the stupid minions, and then if they have the challenger, they just win. Almost always, because they usually don't die until then. But mm -hmm. uh, so basically, oh, I, I know what you mean. So most of the people play the matchup wrong because they try trading instead of racing. I don't know how people play it. I just know that if you play it correctly, the yeah. Paladin will win 
most of the time. Okay. So f from what I've seen, uh, what happens is that uh, if Shaman gets an okay hand with early minions, he just starts going for phase just early. And what you have, you have shielded mini bots, you have master for battle, you have cards that will have to start trading into those Shaman minions. And at some point you win board, but uh, if you are too late, Shaman just bursts you down with flower bursts and uh, lightning, uh, lightning bolts. Um, you can win as a Paladin if you just have Defenders of Argus and block it. But the thing is, the Paladin actually has more defensive meshes than you think, and they are very cheap. They have the Noble Sacrifice, it's very cheap. They have the Belchers nowadays, yeah. they're not cheap, but and then they have the Mysterious Challenger, which is both defense and offense. And offense. Because I if they want to proc the Noble Sack in order to set up lethal, yeah. they will buff so many things in the competitive spirit. But sure. are you uh, taking into consideration that, in example, this Shaman, and other summers too are playing board clears. I think the board clear is too slow. <laughs> I to like the version. To I be think honest. Uh, the board clear is mostly a tech for Peyton Wire. Um, I, th I think I think the Paladin is still favored in this matchup. Well, it seems like Vincent actually um, doesn't think he that. Disagrees with yeah, he disagrees. Yeah, uh, he disagrees. Maybe he's playing Merlot Paladin. Who knows? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Uh, he said Seeker is the best, but maybe he did I change I things up. I don't up. think you'd place uh, Murloc Paladin against the guy who's known for having Acro decks, though. Oh, man, there is a Reno Jackson. All right, guys, so we di we touched up on this matchup a, a bit. If there is a Reno Jackson, it uh, it might be favored. Clears, silence, good stuff. Oh, Steady cool. shot. Steady shot, second time in a row. That's All right. good Ooh. against Warlock, I've heard. Yeah, it's kind of like the antagonist of the hero power, right? I think like they are really good friends. Like both hero powers, uh, they work in tandem. They kill Warlock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine if can if you could pick Warlock hero power, but for for your opponent, like deal to damage to your opponent, give him a card. Ah, now we've gone too far. <laughs> now we've gone too far. That's ridiculous. But it would be cool. That wasn't. That wouldn't be that bad actually. Maybe nerf is coming. Oh. <laughs> Nerf? I feel for, like it would for the steady shot? <laughs> yeah, deal, da guess. deal to damage and give your opponent a card. Yeah. Sounds kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for control hunters. <laughs> <laughs> Poor hunters. Uh, that's the turn when you roll four, right? Uh, if you go for the... I, I would say if you go for that roll, you want to go for the four on the totem golem, right? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you have a better chance to hit the three, I guess. Or three or four, because like you have a chance. Yeah, to but uh, but if you hit three or four, then it's a fifty-fifty between. Uh, 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 I mean, you, if you hit three or four, you kill it, right? Yeah. So and you deny one damage. If you hit three or four on the totem golem, you practically kill it next turn yeah. with whatever. And if you roll four, then you you save yourself two more HP, right? Yeah, yeah. the imps might very well kill the totem golem next turn. Yeah, exactly. And removing the Finley is only one damage. Yeah, I I can kind of agree with that. I think there might have been a strong consideration for imploding the three four. By the way, is this game is this game over actually? Um, <laughs> Reno Jackson Reno Jackson is one, is one turn too late, I believe. There is a crackle in hand, so we see four damage, six damage for sure from uh, the leper now. Yo shadow flame, and there's no overload for the doom hammer. Uh, but he will crackle, I guess. Uh, if if all the everything is geared, which uh, which is you do crackle unless he draws something else. Like lightning bolt, you can squeeze Two, eight. it. Still. So he does yeah, lightning yeah. bolts. Oh, I've this, good. this is 100% yep. win. Like it doesn't even matter what crackle hits. Even rolled two. Wow. Yeah, and well, uh, that was fast. Yep, Reno Jackson was too late to the party. We're not gonna be rich this time. And Vincent is just looking at it, and he can't believe it. He wasn't like even late. He was at the, at the exact time he was needed, but it just it wasn't in six yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn like five kill. He was waiting in the line. It's like yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Actually, that lightning Let me bolt. In. That lightning bolt just won the game. Uh, yeah. And like, uh, if you would not get it, I think he was losing. Yes, the Reno would be such a swing turn. Yeah, Reno would just say insane. you just did nothing for the first five turns. I wonder yeah. if he uh, even like if he didn't draw it, he would have to go for the Craggle because he would have like, a chance. He rolled six, yeah. so and then the Reno, if he didn't roll the six, the Reno would heal him up and he would have way less first. Exactly, because he exactly. just used one. So yeah, that was probably the game. Well, then, like, we will see a Doomhammer next turn and slowly starting to grind down, but the Imps are there. Reno is de dealing damage as well. Yeah, Reno actually deals damage, and he already had the Golem. I think you would even go for uh, just playing the Golem for tempo. Yeah. I think the Warlock would probably win. Yeah, I think easily, yeah. 
So the lightning bolt changed everything. It's just yeah. so crazy. But there's so much. Like there were so many top decks which were lethal. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the deck is so consistent, right? Rock Biter was was lethal as well. I don't know if it's consistent, but it's consistent in drawing damage. I mean, it's consistent with its game plan. Yeah. It, you it deal is. phase damage, and if you can deal phase damage, then you clear the board of elemental storms and. True. So elemental destruction. It's so interesting that this this phase shaman actually replaced hunter like 100 percent. Well, it has the same hero power. <laughs> it does, <laughs> actually. It does. It does things better. Like you have more kill commands than you need them. Yeah, I actually heard Blackout saying. Uh, I know he's played uh, quite a bit of the shaman, saying that almost every time you draw Finley on turn one, you just you win the game. I don't really. I mean, I'm not as experienced with the deck because I play retarded decks like Murloc Paladin, but um, I guess if he says it, then there's something about it. I think just people like to have strong opinions to you know. Yeah, and Blackout I is known for strong yeah. opinions. But the, it's probably means that the Finley is pretty strong on top. Absolutely, I, I think uh, there is a lot of truth in what Blackout said for sure. So, Secret Paladin, you said to us that this is. Yeah, now guys, now you see the real counter, okay? Yeah. Trust me. We'll see. I, I mean, his draw is not very good, the Paladin. <laughs> so I, I'm really a bit scared about my prediction, <laughs> to be honest. Well. Yeah, and the, ooh, the Yam draw is pretty damn nuts. It's actually. Oh, Shield and Meeple is something. Yep. I, I think that helps a lot. It, it might save the day, but, but it, it does it? D doesn't like trade with the two threes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, Ooh, and, uh, and it also next turn is with so good as well. Five damage to the face just from two mana. Lava shock into a Stodem Golem as well next oh turn. I probably God. cannot do it because then you overload into the Doomhammer. Maybe yeah, he you just can't do that. has to just hero power. But then, like, you do not expect board gears from Paladin. So. uh you might actually go for it, especially because the the, the Totem Golem but also buffs the Trog. You really need to race like into that uh, mysterious Challenger turn, though. So I, I'm actually very interested in this turn. I like Lava Shock. Yeah. Lava Shock and Totem Golem. Yeah, you buff uh, and you go face. No, you thing. need the Doom Hammer on turn five. No, do you really need it? I think with this kind of hand, I think you need it. Uh, so you will have a three four, a, f a four two, a two three taunt, and a two one. You might actually even Lava Shock the three four. And attack into it. I don't think you actually yeah, do anything with the board. You just play the minion, go face, because you need the lava shock for the elemental destruction. Okay, okay, that makes the, um, yeah, that was the third line. It was even but better. What is the what is your next turn like? What is turn five? You don't care about line? what I, you don't make a plan. You just go face, you deal don't damage, and if it goes bad, then you have the reset button. So with this plan, we just hero power next turn if we don't top deck something. Well, he uh, has the lava uh, shock, face. Hero power and then Doom oh. Hammer Rogue Biter face. But we just agreed that you want to keep the Lava Shock for the destruction. Um, it's, it's an it's option. Tough. It was a tough turn, actually. It's flexible. It was a tough turn, yeah. for sure. This was probably one of those turns with Shaman that if you make a mistake, you can just uh, lose or win the game. Like, yeah. depends. <laughs> like, there's a lot of. Uh, in aggro decks, like, basically, there's a lot of turns like that. that if you make one, you take one line of play. And if it turns out to be correct because the cards go your way, you win. If it doesn't, you just lose. Like, usually you kill them at the very last moment before you die yourself, or before they taunt you out or heal you out or something. So it matters really much how you maximize your damage. So if you misplay on one turn, you're gonna lose damage, and yeah, that loses games for you. Yeah. So I wonder how it, this will turn out, because um, going for the 3-2, for the I mm, would probably prefer sure. face damage. Yeah, because the 2 silver kills the chalk, so you're not really protecting anything. It buys him time, though. So it buys him time to draw into more burst. He's at 16 life, by the way, right? That's not a high number. That's actually r s really low, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> when does Doomhammer waiting? But now comes the defensive missions, missions that I was talking about. But now it's the turn when you actually can play Elemental Destruction. Oh man, it's even better well, actually. Wait, 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 you don't... do you? Uh, you can kill it with just the normal attacks. You don't have to. Just gonna man mode it. Next yeah. turn you can lava shock. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, this is ten damage overall, so yeah. Ethereum will be like Reno Jackson, just probably one turn late. Yeah, we haven't seen an Earth shock in any of the games. I'm really curious as to whether he's playing it. Yeah, probably just one. But some people actually don't even play one, and since he's playing the destructions, maybe there are no Earth shocks. Could be. And uh, also, he's playing the. Um, the axe, the, the other one. The yeah, oh yeah, right, right. Axe, yeah. yeah. And if there are no earth shocks, then the Tyrion might end the game. 
But it depends how much damage he will take now. Ooh. If he connects uh, to face with the Rogue Rider, and he, he will, like he can this turn. He I can mean, this is the turn when you play Elemental Destruction, and you just deal 10 damage to the face. Mm, yeah. He can even play the Totem Goal afterwards. Yeah. Ooh. It's kind of crazy. And you have 8 man. And as a knowledge, will be top decked next to him. Sure of that. That's not an Iotron. Oh, wait. Why would you kill that? Uh, because I guess he's trying to protect. Yeah, him. possibly protect. Uh, but he's not playing Totem Golem. So, uh, I would say the distant, if you go for that, you just play the Totem Golem because it's one turn away from Tyrion. And turn 7, probably not going to matter that much when it comes to taunts, to defensive plays, right? Because it's most likely a noble sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And there probably will no there will be no second Belcher because there's one Belcher in low tap as 5 drops, right? In the Paladin. Uh, Sometimes. I, I think killing... Hmm, actually, with Noble Sacrifice, it's a bit tricky. I think Oskaka actually is favoring the Double Belcher version. At yeah. least I, I think he was. A, a, lo a so lot of players, I think, are favoring Double Belcher. Yeah. Not only because it's defensive, but also because... Oh, that's too damage. Yeah. The thing about the Belcher, which works so well in this Secret Paladin, is that when you play Belcher into Mysterious Challenger, a lot of the time the slime will survive. And then that's actually a threat for for the competitive spirit yeah, as well. True. And the whole buffing thing, you cannot attack the big guy after you pop the secrets because there's a slime. True. So The two damage of, uh, on Apprentice didn't matter that much uh, because uh, he still puts Paladin on free damage. So almost any spell, like the second Lava Shock will not be lethal. Yeah. But almost any we'll spell is lethal yeah, anyway. No. So like Crackle, Lava Burst, Lightning Bolt, uh, what else is there? The just uh, will kill and win the game. Earthshock will win the game if there is one. Um, There's a lot of stuff. Second Lepernome would be not enough, actually. That would be interesting if second Lepernome is being drawn. So does it make sense but it doesn't trade? die next turn anyway, right? Because you have five, you play the Tyrion, so that you have six maximum damage next turn, it's six this turn, uh, sorry, seven this turn, yeah. seven next turn, so that's 14. Actually, that's exactly yeah, lethal. Exact yeah, you yeah. should just go face with everything. And yep. I also don't think that it uh, changes any outs for the Shaman. I think the outs are the same. Yeah. Uh, Maybe flame second, they like... Flame Tongue Totem actually uh, might... Yeah, but I think yes. he doesn't play it with those tech cards. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of a read you have to, have to make at this point. You don't play Flame Tongue Totem when you have Stormforge Axe. Um, that would be my guess. Possibly. I, I haven't seen... Was Shaki playing? Wait, did, did, did he just threw away uh, he has, the he lethal? He has the keep off Wilderman. That's two damage. Oh, okay. So that's fine. Ooh. Oh, then uh, he doesn't have lethal yet. But he, both players don't have lethal now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's like first spirit is not terrible. Now you need to sacrifice Lepernome just to play around the silence. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Owls are not common, but there are a possibility. Uh, yeah. Rockbiter weapon is lethal as well. And this is not lethal for Vincent yet. Well, this is quite a... <laughs> surprising situation to be in, right? I'm sitting on my toes right now. I'm just like, it feels like somebody's gonna die anytime. Yeah, you have to set up lethal here if you can, and you have to take as little damage on Tyrion as possible. Mm -hmm. Tyrion is the savior. Well, you just sacrifice to one, 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 right? Yeah. Six damage to the face is crucial this turn. Will he be able to to win if you actually kill the free four? Well, you need to set up a situation when you could probably could just end the game with a single s single swing with the sword, right? If everything dies. I think, I think on this turn, simply because it doesn't change the outs, I think you can afford to play around to uh, flame the flame flame time. Yeah, by trading the 1-1. One, one. With the 1-1? One, one. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. So f if he doesn't trade the 1-1, one, one, flame tongue isn't out. Because, yeah. Uh. Uh, he obviously cannot attack it with the weapon because the Lava Shock isn't out. <laughs> this game yeah, is so close. Play the secret. <laughs> okay, guys, last card. I this this, this card like will decide a match. What is it? Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's actually That's enough. enough. Yeah. That's enough. Wow. <laughs> oh, wait. my God. It, he still didn't know what kind of secret it is, but it is enough. Yeah, it is actually. Well, if it would not be sacrifice, it wouldn't matter because it would not proc. There is a full board anyway. Oh, yeah, right. And that's a good call. Redemption would actually be uh, the yeah. only secret to stop this. Yeah. Trading the 1-1, one, one, though. Oh, my nice God. Jackie style. Thank you, the match. 3-0 versus Vince. So, the 1-1 one, one was the mistake in this game. Yeah, it ended up being the critical mistake. Mm-hmm. 
Just not killing the 1-1. One one. Not killing the 1-1, one one. yeah. That, that was the crucial one damage that actually mattered, and um, you couldn't face the the, uh, the two. Like, otherwise. the more I think about it, the more you really have to uh, kill the 1-1, one one because you open more outs. Uh, Argent Horse Rider, uh, a Lava Shock that was out, like, basically two damage spells or cards mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are also an out to, to win. Yeah, so yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Even the that's Lava true. Shock. So uh, that was a very fast and impressive match. Uh, Crane, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> no problem. <Yeah. laughs> Spot like, don't, on go, analysis. don't go. Yeah, don't go. The yeah, counter go was ahead. correct. The what? The counter for the sh for the shaman was really really good. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, but to all fairness, it was the closest match from all three. It was a game without the mysterious challenger, so you know it's not it's not really fair. I think. <laughs> Yeah, he did okay. miss the Mistress Challenger. You're really? right, you're right. Yeah, that it's only fair if you draw sure. that every time, right? It's only fair. Absolutely. <laughs> well, but you have to give it to Vincent. Like, he did play um, to the best of his ability, and he did bring um, the Reno lock. Uh, that almost, like, all the games were really close, because the Reno lock game, Lightning Ball, top deck, if that would not happen, Vincent wins that. Yep. Uh, the Paladin game, if he, well, he actually misplayed. If he would not attack, if he attacks into the 1-1, one -one, he... He would have he just e equalized and... Be one two two one on the match and maybe yeah. swing the game with the secret pad in the next two games, right? And yeah. just crush his opponent. Absolutely. All right. So Traki style is going to the top eight. Uh, Romanian players. Are, I, I'm sure a lot of Romanian uh, people watching this match right now are really happy. Uh, is he the second or the Ulothar? I don't know. I didn't talk to him yet. You should. Amas is probably on the phone right now, <laughs> 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 poaching the players already. Okay. Uh, but I guess we'll be preparing for the next match, right? Absolutely. So, guys, just give us some time. We'll prepare the next match, we'll, which will be the last match of the day. We still have one more person going in the top eight. But for now, just give us some time. And again, Crane, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully we'll be, we'll be casting again tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I lost today, so I'm not sure I'll be here tomorrow. But yeah. Hopefully if you I show do, up. Uh, yeah, if I do, <laughs> I'll cast for sure. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, see you guys in just a moment after a short break.